The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. On this Thursday, March the 17th, this is the Tiger Technician's Hour, 877-927-6648 is the number to call. What a fascinating session yesterday. I did get a couple of people uh, emailing saying, thank you for um, your early show where you said, watch out after the Fed comes because there could be a slide. Um, and we did get that well, got a slide. We were up over 400 points and we went down over 100 points to a minus 100 points. And then we had that turnaround. And look at this spectacular green candle. Look at all these green candles here. But it's all in the lower range. In fact, if you had to be as blunt as possible, you would say uh, since about the 22nd of February, we've, we've just been in a 2,000 point trade. Yep, 2,000-point trading range. What's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that almost every one of those sessions, have a look here on the left side of this Dow chart going from the high of 36,952 uh, back in the 5th of January. Look at those candles. It was straight down, but look at the size of those candles. Look at the candles here. These are every just about every day we've had a huge move up and down, especially if you include the futures contracts. More significant is the speed of the turnarounds intraday, up and down, up and down. Have a look at this. This is the e. This is the e mini. This is actually current. Finally got that all organized. Got my notations. Took a, about uh, 15 minutes early this morning, and I did the notations on the one, two, five, and ten minutes e mini. This is the June contract e mini charts. We've just made a peak e in the two minute chart. It was just a really nice cup formation. See that left side high at about 710 this morning, where you went to about 43, let's call it 42. And then we pulled back and then we ran up to exactly the same number in a peak D. But look at the left side strength in the technicals and look at the weakness in the technicals on that. So you pull back very sharply, come down to about 43.24 and then go sideways. These sideways ranges go on for quite a while, goes sideways and then breaks out and goes to peak A, a B, C, D. And we've just had a peak E. Well, I shouldn't say yes, we have had a peak E in the two minute chart. Fascinating because look at the five minute chart. This is the E mini S&P. Had that big run up after that sharp slide yesterday. Uh, well, let's just say that we started off at about 1.30. What was that? 21? Wait a minute, 21.30. That was the last night. Um, but anyway, there was a run up that went to the 43.62 ish area at about 2.30 this morning, pulls back, makes the H pattern the dreaded H. See the 200 period moving average, this pink line? You didn't even have to care about that. Then all of a sudden it touches it, tries to rally, and then breaks down below it. And then it acts as a fulcrum up and down, up and down, up and down, goes above, goes to peak C1, C2, pulls back, and then you get another sudden spike to the upside. At this moment, I'm calling it a leg E. It is the high that was made at 310 this morning was 43.63.50. The high that was made uh, 10... Uh, in this bar, uh, no, we're in a new bar. The bar going to 1010 was 43.6300. Interesting. So, um, most importantly, what I said to subscribers is that there should be some kind of a normal, normal action after yesterday's last hour big spike <clears throat> would be to see about a 20% decline off the last hour. And we, we kind of got that. We went down about 140, 150 points in the Dow futures. <clears throat> then we came back. And now what we're looking at is this double top that was made uh, with a high of 310. I'm looking at the 10-minute chart now to peak D. And now it's called a gray. It should be a gray leg B. But I'm making it blue only because the stochastic's above 80% and 87%. 
And that's just suggesting that there is internal strength. So I'm going to put an up arrow, and we'll see if this actually works out. <clears throat> and it says it should go over the next 20, 30 minutes, maybe more, to higher highs above the high that was made at 36, uh, 43, 63, 50, back at about 3 this morning. We'll see what happens. Uh, it, it's all, it's just so fascinating. And the market is, what a mechanism in the market. And to think that you can use some technical tools, because it's all of these charts are fractals, either in the small or the larger context of other patterns. And they just repeat over and over and over. Why does it do that? And that's the interesting thing. Well, my contention is the, um, the human... Oh, what we're looking at right here, the Dow is up 17 at 34,082. We're looking at the Dow daily chart. But let's go to this E-mini. What this is right here that we're looking at, let's go to the one-minute chart. Oh, we got the two-minute chart. Right here at 43.59.25, a peak E probably going to be pulling back in the, in the two-minute chart. This is a price point of human nature. Uh, more and more, there's a me mechanical side to it, an electronic side to it. But this price point of 43.57.75, everything going back is history. I know it's a one minute, a two minute chart, but history is anything looking back. So, how does it work? How does it work that, let me show you something. Uh, I haven't got it notated uh, in the 10 minute chart, but I have it notated from yesterday's notations. Look at this. ESH22 is still active. Look at look what happened. I discussed this in the morning in my early show, and then I discussed discussed it when I, I did the uh, Tom O'Brien show at three o'clock, and I mentioned that uh, we'll just go back to here that at about twenty two ten. Remember I said oh, uh, 20, oh that was twenty minutes past ten in the evening on the fifteenth. There was a crossover to the green nine-period exponential moving average. And I wasn't up at that time, but if you wanted, you could have gone long and held that long all the way through until it went pink, right there, 9, 9 10. Uh, that was 9, 10 on the 16th in the morning. Is that right? Yes, 9, 10 in the morning. And um, just briefly went for about four bars. It went pink and then it went green again for that big spike up before the Fed talk so that you could have had the move from what I said was 42 something like 43 to 43 let's go to the low of the day of the bar 4302 and then it went pink and then it went green and it held green even with that big spike and then the Fed comes out and speaks and it plunges down to where to the 200 period moving average goes under it with a very nice, this is a chapter with green Roman candle, which says if the price moves above that bar for two out of three sessions, making the closing price, uh, I usually like the middle part, so that would have been the opening price of 4266 um, support. That's usually a very positive sign. And it screamed up for a peak C. And then it went sideways in the peak C for all that time. Well, if you go to the ESM22, that's look what happened. We finally got to that peak D on an inside rectangle formation. Oh, I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. Someone remind me about the rectangle formation. I have a new discovery. I'll be back in a moment. Ciao. Bye. And, and, uh, Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Oh, there's a question in the den. I'll have to do this tomorrow. I've got too many charts up at this moment. Could I look? Uh, let's see. Could I? Where did it go? Where did it go? Uh, Basil, do a 2008 comparison. Um, the timing is following to the day, almost bottom in March, run up to May. Uh, this is the S&P, I think the comparison was. I, uh, yeah, I think so. Uh Yeah. All right. So uh, I'll do I'll do the current S and P weekly. I've got you know I've got comparisons all over the show. Let, let me just show you the one that keeps coming up. 1929. The top was 386.10, 386.10. That was the long weekend, uh, September the, to the September fourth, and then the market opened and it was just downhill. Um, we we have got it. That was a peak E in the monthly. A quick D sideways action, then to an E. This is, a, in many ways, a very different chart formation. But because it's got the black background, you can see the way the yellow MACD, the nine-period differential, has closed so far this month sharply underneath the 14, which is still underneath the 20-26-period uh, moving average, which is still a positive. Look at the way the stochastic has turned down, and now it's actually at 76%. Uh, there are very big differences in a lot of things. So I, that's the one comparison. You're talking about the comparison with 2008. I, I don't want to mess up my charts right now. I will, if I remember, I'll try to do it tonight and I'll, I'll have it ready tomorrow. But right now, I see some similarities in other chart formations that are really important. But most significant will be, let me just close this out. Most significant will be how we close the month of March. So let me just say that that's, to me, is absolutely key because markets at a certain point start to digest all the news and then start to just dismiss, set it aside because it's going to come back, but for the moment sets it aside. We're looking at that right now because the Dow has moved up to plus 44, the S&P is plus 7. But most importantly, I just use chart formations. And the kickoff right here, this complex sideways move, we can get restarts. But once you get to a leg C, that C has to be really strong. And it has to be strong 
above B. Remember the last one that rallied to about the 8th or 9th of the of February to 35,824 in the Dow? That was that peak B that had stopped at the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. This is the daily chart. Then broke above it for a day, and the next day, whoosh, went under it, and that was it. It hasn't touched it again since yesterday. So I just want to do the chart patterns. There, there's enough to think and worry about without having to go to have heart stopping 2007 top or eight or any relationship there. Just let's go with what we've got. So I'll, I'll do some work and I'll, I'll try to get to it tomorrow. I know there are comparisons and I've done them myself, but the crux of the matter is that the rotation, and this to me is absolutely imperative that you have to keep in mind. We'll take once again ARKK. This is Kathy Wood. Woods um, ARK Innovation ETF, 125 was the high back in November, plummets down to the 14 period moving average. This is a screamer that goes from the 30s to 125. This is a fund. And then makes an arch formation at a peak A minus. Uh, and that's what you'd expect at this particular Chapman Wave notation of the dreaded H. Plummets below and then goes more than one to one to the downside. Goes all the way down to 51.85 on the 15th of this month. It's had two good green days. And this rotation is what I've been talking about. Are we about to see the uh, stocks that have held so well thus far? Let's go to uh, Microsoft just for the moment. Uh, if I type it in the right place, I'll get the chart, which has pulled back, but it hasn't done anything like those um, other stocks in the type of NDX 100 category, the tech stocks, high tech stocks, but tech, tech related, and have just plummeted 50, 60, 70 percent. This is different. You see, Star Gold has got three wicks underneath the 14 period moving average in the monthly. There's the Chapman Wave Roman candle. It went halfway in, so it broke it. Yes, last month was exactly the same. We're actually having a third one, but they're getting tinier and tinier. And the nine period moving average is so far above the 14 period moving average, there will have to be something devastating in Microsoft to say, oh, 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 nobody wants to touch it. It's plummeting. And that would say that by the, by the end of the month, end of month of March, we're halfway through, you will see not only the low of, uh, say, 20, 270 taken out, but it'll be at the 250 area, underneath this 250 key support level. That'll be a big deal. So here's what I'm saying. Yes, there are absolutely similarities to so many things, but the fact that we've had a rotation to not correct, but to bear market a whole s series of sectors that are related to tech, while at the same time you're looking at some stocks, for instance, the one I mentioned yesterday. Um, no, let's not go there. I'd like to go to, just for the moment, I'll go to Schwab. I did mention this yesterday. Schwab, which is in the um, brokerage area, Charles Schwab, SCHW, down 38 cents today at 88.56. Um, we have, we have the generic IAI as a long, that's the broker dealer ETF, but this is acting so well. And it, look, when you look at the chart, at the monthly chart, it's just had a bit of a correction in the monthly chart. Now, Schwab, a brokerage area, should be way, way down under, normal, under any recessionary type talk. You would always get the broker, historically, you would just see the brokers tanking because people would just get out of stocks. No, I think there's a, there is a huge buying uh, contingent out there, and they are not just propping the market. They are now trading. There's a whole bunch. There's something very different, and that keeps me locked in to my saying: we are still in a mega bull market mentality. We are in the area of the golden era, era where. Um, Excessivity is just, it predominates everything. Even um, Tommy O'Brien, who has a fabulous show, starts off as kick, kick, market kickoff at nine o'clock. He was talking about um, college athletes becoming professionals. I, I must say, I, I dread it. I, it's inevitable. There's just no way you're going to stop it. All of us, everything's moving away from education. Everything. So you go to college, and now you're this hip, cool character, not just hip, 
but you are a, a, a zillionaire, right? And you're not just one, you've got a whole bunch of them. What does it do to the educational aspect of, of all these high institutions, high institutions of learning? It changes it completely. And we're moving so far away from education. This coronavirus thing just did a, a, a terrible job on the youth over the last two years. There are some kids that thrived. I met someone the other day. Their, their son is just, he just thrived. He hates going to school. He thrived. He got A's. He just did fantastically. But there are, for every one, there must be 150 to 200 students who really suffer. And I think that's going to be. It's a, all right, back to the market. Dow's up 44, SP's up 9. We'll be back in a moment. Charles Schwab, keep your eye on it. I'll be back and then it's a lot to discuss. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at DFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, we're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Now we're looking at EF. That's your PG. Unusual to make a PG, but it does happen. That's the Six highest peak. Here we go. So what we're looking at is a question came in. iShares Latin America... Uh, 40 it's called ETF so um, 
Let's see. The actual question was, uh, uh, and also, hey, thank you for that information. Saudi Arabia just announced they will no longer use the Amer- Have they made it official? They will no longer use the American dollar for petrodollars, but will now use the Chinese yuan. Uh, this is your development. Okay. But what I really had a question, and we can, we can talk about that. We'll see what happens with the dollar. In the meantime, um, Basil, ILF. ILF is the iShares Latin America 40 ETF. Uh, let's see, daily hovering around the 200 period exponential moving average. Yep, it's using that in the daily chart as support. It was resistance, then it became support, and now it's very strong support. But each move has become narrower and narrower. Uh, I'm looking for direction in the next few weeks. Yesterday went long at 26.5. Good, it's at 26.95 right now. Um, yeah, so. I immediately went to uh, to check on on their supplies of all the commodities that are, are lacking right now. Uh, what about wheat and all that? You know, so the climate is is perfect for many of the grains. Of course, they do the coffee, the, uh, the beans, etc. Um, I I choose Latin America. I L F. I like it. I think it's in a big digestive phase right now. It has already been up into the 32 area back in uh, the spring of last year. And they're beautiful. Ch- I love these channels. Look at, now, we were talking about fractals, how, how human nature. We're looking at every dot, every every move, 26.93 right now, up 13 cents. That is a price point of of this particular moment that we're talking about. And that is a cumulative effect and affect of the buttons being pushed. Buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell. But that's what someone thinks it's worth right now, 2691. This is a fascinating thing. When you get a down channel, how does a down channel, look at this line. It's an absolute straight line and almost to the penny since the very first drop from the high that was made, the little double top that was made the week of the 11th of June, at 32.01, that low that was made a week of the 9th of July at 29.43 bounces up over the, the green nine period moving average, then closes right on the 14 period moving average. Um, and then it goes to a low low of 30.31. If you join that low and you join the low of the 20th of August and you keep joining each successively low to the, uh, this is a Chapman wave. A minus, it's called right here. So there's a continuation pattern that goes D and then a trough E slash A and immediately goes B, C, D, E. And it stops at an E little doji candle E on the, what was that? That was on the 20, week of the 24th of December, 2257. And what does that say? It says, once again, look how many candles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve candles in whatever number of weeks it is, maybe double, um, hit that nine. How on earth does it do that? No, oh, hey, that's not good enough. I love to do parallel channels. Oh, I, I cannot do that now. I don't want to do it now. So look at this. I make a parallel channel to the high that was made on the 25th of June of 32.44. Remember, the high was 32.52. And one week later, it makes a dip, and then it goes to a double top failure pattern. And I joined the candle of the 30th of July. And it's an absolute straight line. I don't always have to put in the channel because the the 14 period, black 14 and the, and the pink nine period moving average went across negative. Those are resistance areas. But I love just to do that. And now what we've got is we've got the Chapman wave breakout patterns, almost like a falling axe, but in this case, a parallel channel. And what happens is usually there's a very big candle, but there isn't. There's a steady move up. And what has it done? Oh, I'm going to have to show you. Uh, uh, Jeff, you, you're still there. I, I hope I can do it. And I hope I remember to do it. I will show you channels. I think I did it yesterday, didn't I? And look at this beautiful channel in the uh, weekly chart on the upside from the low that was made right there. And look at that. Almost parallel. Once again, human nature says it can't get above this level. 
without pulling back and testing the support. That's the when you understand channels, they are just the most beautiful things. They just keep you in. It's a track, and it keeps you within that track. Now look what's happening. You've got the the low of three days ago of 25, 26, no, 25.88 held the 14 period moving average. It held the trend line and we've broken above the nine period moving average. And it's in a peak C and the MACD is strong. The stochastic in the weekly chart is at 86% and flat. I love that. On balance volume, yes, turned down. I'm going to suggest that your entry point is good, but hopefully it's your first entry point. I think you said you start a position. Um, yeah, oh, you went long. Okay, my, my guess is that you start your position. I like this very much. I don't know if it's ready for the breakout. I actually think it's ready for more of a sideways consolidation. And your key support now will be 2550. If it goes under 2550 on a closing basis, I'm going to be very strict. I'll make it 2531, the low of the 24th. I'm going to say you'll have another chance, but I'd probably lighten up. Now, you don't have to necessarily get out because it's in a buy mode in the in the daily. It's in a buy mode in the weekly because of the stochastic. And the monthly chart is has not yet crossed back to positive. It's still got the pink nine period moving average. So this is a little early in the game. But my, if you're talking about three weeks' time, if at any point in the next, not three weeks, but in the next week, is able to close above 27.81, maybe touch 28, that's exactly what you want to be looking for, and that'll be a really good sign. Okay, next question is, um, question, hi, Basil, EWW, EWW is the iShares Mexico. So we've got all these southern uh, uh, countries um, having chart patterns that have held well. And of course, agriculturally, Mexico is, it, it, it's, we're really dependent on them for many things. So did that take it out? I just need to see that. It went peak A, peak B, peak C, but the 46.56 low uh, back in late January and the 46, oh, 58. Oh, it took it out. 58. Oh, no, 56, 58. That's still in place. Good. So this is the Chapman dreaded H formation. It's a successful one so far. And uh, let, let me just do this. Take a moment. Um, there we go. Peak A, right there. A. Peak B, right there. Peak C, pulls back, has trough A, trough B, but it's still in place. So this is now a gray A. This is a gray B. Um, oh, what was the question? Uh, let's see. Uh, leg B, does it still have strength or will it go back to full recent gap? EWR Mexico e ETF. I like this chart. It's in the rectangle formation. It is in a rectangle formation, meaning it can go towards the top and then pull back. I'll talk about that. It's the same anyways. The ILF. I'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So I would say, based on the monthly chart, having gotten to a peak, D it might even have squeaked to a, a 51.49, 51.65. So it's already accomplished a tremendous amount. It's now digesting huge gains, but it's still in a sweet spot. This is Mexico uh, in terms of um, demand for their products whether it is the commodities or whatever it is. Um, so this says to me that it's in play. I don't know if right now it's going to make the big move to the 52 and a half, 53 area. Um, but at this particular point, what I would say is that if you have started, let me ask the question, have you started? I think it does it still have strength? Or will it fill the gap? Well, the gap's at 49. That's not a big deal. So yeah, over a dollar, if I'm looking at a breakout, uh, weekly is peak A, B, C. It should still go to a D. My target would be 52 as the breakout point. I want to do this in a long term, if you don't mind. Here we go. Oh, my. Just as well I did that. So you've got... Look at that. It was once at 75. So, I, you know, there are so many of these foreign markets that are having chart formations that you would be a little surprised to see after what's happening around the world. So that is a peak right there. So this is A, B, C, D, E. Retraces has a an arch formation. This is actually the lowercase h that goes to lowercase m, breaks down, and the high of the January, February, March. Was that March? Now, April of 2013 at 76.80. 76.80. Yeah, okay. So we're talking about, what did I say? April of 2013. I may as well just type that in. And now we've got a low that was made March of 2020 at about 25. Was that a round number? Let's just have a look. 2020, it goes down to... 25.03. Next month, 25.23 is a low. Peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. It's already done more than the rectangle formation. This is that lopsided rectangle formation. It goes stair step up to just under or just on or just above the previous high. In this case, it's the monthly high of February the 20th at 48.07. We've already gone to 51, what did I say, 58 or, or 60. So, and it's walking the 14 period moving average. Looking out, I like it because in this rectangle formation, it could consolidate for a little while, but the next level of resistance is up at 52, 52 round, oops, 5306, 
August of 2018. And then it breaks out if it ever goes above 57 Point eighty two, the high of August two thousand seventeen, and look at the way it's walking this very nicely. So, is it a consolidation area? If you're looking out longer term, I like it very much. On a shorter term basis, today's action. So the day's young. So far, this is exactly what you wanted to see after the gap up yesterday. Is a follow through, preferably with a close above yesterday's high of 50.82. MACD is cross positive. Stochastic still very weak at 71 percent. On balance volume hasn't shown strength, but yesterday it the nine period crossed the 14 period, so that is a good sign. So, I'm going to say. If you're looking out now, if you're talking about a trade, I would do it in a different way. I'd have less of a position on at 50.61 if you've already got in. And I would have to have a two-point stop just to initiate the trade. And if it manages by Monday, I'll exclude Friday. But if Monday it's able to close above the 50.75 high of the 1st of March, close above it. That will say it's targeting a leg D, and that will be above the high of the 16th of February. And it will do that fairly quickly. So I'm giving you three different um, uh, um, perspectives. One is the monthly that's still very, very positive. One is the weekly that's gone to a peak, A peak, B peak, C. Let me just put this in so people who are looking who don't know my work can see. That's peak A. This is, sorry, that is the up arrow because it's already gone to a C, and it, the 9 is above the 14. Uh, I don't like the fact that the stochastics is 70%. I also don't like the fact that the MACD is just kind of flapping around up and down and up and down and no real sign. So on a purely technical basis, there is more. there are more positives than negatives because price is the arbiter of the trend, and that price is looking good. Um, so I do like it. At 50.61, I'd start the position. I would not get the full position. I'd wait because if there is a minor pullback, and I say minor in the sense that by Tuesday or Wednesday, it hasn't touched 50.80 or 51. Instead, what it's done is it's uh, pulled back a little bit, but it's holding about 50.20. That's still very good action. Hope that helps. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go questions, questions all everywhere. Um, let me just see. Uh, yes. So uh, the, I want to go in sequence here. EM. Yes. Okay, here we go. EEM, so we're going through all these different country ETFs. EEM had a big spike up yesterday. Uh, it's trading one moment at 40.80. The next thing you know, it's up at 43.78, hits the 44s, and it's trading right now with a high of 44.58, um, trading at 44.27. I'm a little suspicious of all these moves. That's the reason why subscribers know I didn't get too carried away today. I said there's one that we missed yesterday. I still like it. I'd like it on a pullback. We have enough long positions, where, which are actually doing quite nicely today. I, I'm not getting carried away. We only have longs. We have no shorts. And that's been this way for a little bit. And I, I like it. If you're looking at EEM, I'm just going to say emerging markets ETF for me has a greater risk potential. I'm not sure exactly why. I'm just talking about the chart. Because if it doesn't by Tuesday trade into the 4580, 4610 area, let's go all the way to Wednesday. But instead gets close to yesterday's low, gap up low of 4332. That's only a dollar lower than where we are. I have to say, uh oh, not yet ready for prime time. Um, and that's the same thing with the FXI, the China uh, ETF, the big, large cap ETF. Huge move down. One day I'm talking about it saying, oh, my goodness, look at the way it's gone from 54 in February of last year down to the low of 26 something or other, uh, 26.13 uh, on the 15th. And then yesterday, not only what you, foreign stocks, you always get gaps. The huge gap, though, an island reversal spirals from 26 to a high of 32, six points, uh, you know, that is, what, 30 percent? That, that's a huge move, 20-something percent. And now what we've done is we've given back. And this give back today in these stocks is telling me that's the reason why I did not jump in to those stocks that I said, all oh, the, like the ARKK. I didn't want to have anything right now to do with it. Just the move yesterday was so emotional 
and then technical because of the shorts. And as I was doing Tom's show, I said, uh-oh, we're going to watch because those people who saw who suddenly got short on the big slide when the Fed came out with his statement um, and then saw uh, such a, a quick reversal, must have waited until about 3.45 or 15 minutes before the belt to say, <laughs> now we're going to get that big pullback. And instead we closed at the high of the day. So they kind of squashed. I mean, that's that's tough. So I, I think that there's a lot going on here. You've got to be very selective. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, let me just do this before the break because tomorrow is going to be Technical Friday. I wanted to go through this quickly. Look, P A D C 1 C 2 and then that spiral up to P D and then an E in the five minute chart and it comes back to where? Look how important the 200 period exponential moving average is. That's the five minute. In the two minute, we went to a peak F and we pulled back under the, the um, 200 period moving average. The big question for me, and this is what I deal with uh, throughout the day, and that's the reason why I love in every moment I either I'm trading or I'm, I'm actually studying the charts for patterns that repeat. This must have been a brand new a buy signal to a peak D. Once you go to a peak D, you've, you've kind of eliminated that left side low has to be the starting point. When we broke down under it at um, 610 this morning to the 43.20 level, you saw a brand new peak A. Oh, I didn't see that. 43. Yeah, a peak A. 
double top there, continued, and then it went to that B. But that B was just 50 cents or so above the previous high. Technically, I need to say, once you go above it and you start it below the starting point, that technically says that that should be a blue B. In other words, a buy mode. It could still turn out. But I then go to the short. That would be so unusual that to break and not call it an E because it, it restarted. Those of you who do chapter wave methodology know exactly what I mean. So in this particular instance, I shut aside the 10 minute and I say, uh uh, I'm looking at all the different shorter time frames. I've got a peak F top. I drew this in. I also showed you the rectangle. I didn't have a chance. I wanted to put the dreaded H pattern. It failed, went under the 200 period moving average. That made 40. 341, really important because it needs to get to about 4350 to say, ah, I'm done with the, with the negativity, I can still rally. What I said to subscribers today is if, if the Dow is only minus 40 holding off to 2 o'clock, that's one thing. But if it's gone positive and then it's pulling back, you got to watch that closely. It would be fantastic if it's able to close 40 points or more above. But the chances are this is going to be a consolidation day. That's why we've got to be a little bit careful. Have a wonderful day.